Brilliant. So today the topic, um, I know on the image card says something about GDN, but it's not. It's about the custom intent audience. Uh, Google has uh, made some new changes to the interface as to how you can create these um, custom affinity and custom in-market audiences, which it used to be set up in a, in a different way. So let's jump into our Google Ads account. So what you want to do is to go that here from tools into audience manager. Then you go into custom audiences. And then click on that plus button. So this is where um, they've changed things around a bit. And they've taken out any mention of affinity as well as in market audience. I'm going to make a name of it. It could be anything. Let's say I want this to be about football shoes or something like that. So you can name whatever you want. And then what you do is you've got two options at the top. You select one of them. Selecting this, the only thing is going to change is over here. Add this Google search terms or when you select the top one, it is going to say add interest or purchase intentions. So what they've done is the top one is pretty much that affinity audience as it used to be called before. And I'm going to go through in a bit more detail as to what that means because not many people um, know what it is. And the Google Support Center hasn't got a lot of information on it. And the other one is people who search for any of these terms on Google. So let's start with this one, what these are. So this is long-term interest or a hobby or something you like or love. So if you like football, you probably go to footballing websites pretty much on a daily basis or to your website of your team who you support. So Google picks up all these signals. They know more about ourselves than we know about us. I believe they've got over 70 million data points on everyone. So it's a huge amount of data they hold on us and they have and they pretty much know what we are going to do or what we are going are likely to do so they, that's how they preempt these um, ads in front of us and all of a sudden you think you know what I was searching for these or even sometimes it's weird when you think of a topic I don't know whether they listen in uh, to a conversation or not uh, through the mobile phone apps like Facebook or Google but all of a sudden those ads start to appear as a remarketing ad. So what this means is anyone who has got any interest. So for myself, I love cricket. I go to these cricketing websites at least three, four times a day to check the various scores of the uh, matches and the teams. So Google knows that I am in that audience of cricket followers or lovers or in the um, the hobby is cricket. The same could be applied for golf, cooking, driving, motorbikes, or pretty much anything. And you can be in multiple affinity audiences because it's not that I only like cricket. I also like football. I also like, you know, uh, other stuff which Google will then classify me under that audience. So everybody will be under multiple audiences and Google absolutely um, knows about uh, us as to what we what we do if you are not un uh, sure about what this actually means then you hover the mouse over this question mark bubble and it says enter keywords describing your ideal customers interest or products and services they are actively researching to buy your ads will reach people with those interest or purchase intentions based on your campaign settings, such as marketing objective or bidding strategy. So they've rephrased and reworded this description. And I'm not sure why they have done it like this, because if somebody is actively searching to buy, then they should go under the in-market audience. So I am a bit puzzled as to why 
this has been uh, phrased up in the way it has been because that is correct ideal customers interest or products or services which i'm interested in but i may not be looking to buy i can't remember the last piece of cricketing equipment i had bought because i don't play anymore but i follow the game and my teams right so this is where i'm a bit i'm not confused but i'm 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 intrigued as to why they have done it in such a way because it only causes confusion. If I'm not sure about it, I bet lots of people will be even more confused. Oh, should I we should we use this one or that one? But anyhow, if we just look at the top bit, which is people with any of these interests or purchase intentions, use that, which is the affinity. And the other one, enter search terms your ideal customer is using on Google. Your ads will reach more people who search for those and similar terms only on campaigns running on Google property. On other campaigns, the terms will be used as interest or purchase intention. So when they mean by other terms, they mean by uh, GDN or video, uh, where they will potentially use it as interest-based or purchase intentions. Now, how they classify these signals into purchase intentions is um, debatable. Unless I put in buy, cricket bat then absolutely or cheap cricket bat or the best cricket bat or something like that so if i know that these are keywords which i'm putting on google and google knows that these are with intent then obviously i will be classified under the in market audience so then all you do is you put in your search terms over here you can put in um, as many as you like so the more you give them um, the better it is because then it will have more data to to go with before i don't know whether you remember or not it, on here they used to say put in at least 50 keywords or phrases um, they don't do that anymore it's because the algorithm is now getting better and more clever and powerful so it doesn't need a lot of keywords to work out what we are trying to target and what we are trying to create as an audience so i still will put in five to ten uh, various keywords over here so you know i can put in brand keywords football shoes puma football shoes and so on and as i start to put in the words is going to give me some more ideas and this is how powerful the algorithm is now and how good google is look i've just put in two keywords and it knows it's about football it's giving me all of these put them in very quickly and if i if you put in some more brands then it's going to show you some more some more terms i've got a fair few then what i can also do is i can also put in people who browse websites similar to and this is extremely powerful made a mistake there so now i'm saying to google i also want to find or target people who visit these kind of websites now obviously these are big brands they may not be your competitor but what you can do if you are a small business or you have a localized business where you have got a shop and your target audience is just a 10 mile radius around you what you can also do is put in the urls of all your other competitors so for me as a business our competitors can be in the us could be in china india australia pretty much everywhere so i can put them in as well and Google is going to know that, okay, I'm looking for these kind of uh, visitors. So it's kind of like remarketing to my customers' audience, but not literally in the, you know, uh, 100%. What we are saying to Google is, I want to more get, I want to target visitors who go to web websites like these. So this is a little tip which I can give you and which i have used lots of time is when i'm creating these audiences and i want to target all my local audience i put in all the 
local digital marketing agencies or web designers or photographers or videographers in this list. So what I'm telling to Google is I want to show my ads to people who go to these kind of websites. Although it will be very localized, that's fine because I'm going to pick up um, a really good segment of the audience, which is a local audience. And if somebody comes across me as a business and they see me, oh, they're in Leighton Buzzard, it's just next door to us. They are more likely to come to me than go to somewhere else in London or many miles away. And then they come to my website, they can see we do lots of videos and YouTube videos and live streams. And I do know for a fact that none of my local customers, as well as other agencies around the world, they're not doing this video marketing as aggressively as we are. We are here every day, putting up our content. Very few people are doing this. And once they wake up and start on this journey of video marketing, I'll be many, uh, uh, many miles away from them because right now they've got zero videos on the youtube channel i've got about 650 odd videos right now even if they start uploading videos very aggressively it will be very difficult for them to catch me up in terms of the amount of content we are putting up